the uh, steward is going to plan to blow some things up there on the ship real things real debris coming towards camera and then uh, because we're doing this in front of the green screen it allows us to add our cg explosion in the background and integrate it in the whole destruction of, of the fleet in that sequence what neil wants is a is a big force field to come out from that so you've just got the shock of that coming through to create that effect we use air mortars we put balsa wood we put lightweight debris we use cork we pile it in there and we're using 12 of these to create the explosion in different parts of the ship. We get the effect of a lot of debris in close up in the foreground whilst you've got the big CG explosion in the background so you just get the sense of the shock really coming in just as the ship starts to break up. When Stannis sees the explosion what Neil wanted was to give a real dramatic shot of Stannis reacting to the explosion so what we did for that is there was a big flash of light. At the same time, we had a big tube, which is called an air mover. So you can just switch that on. You get a big rush of air and it, it moves the hair, it moves his face and it moves his costume and he just falls out of frame. So it's just a moment that Neil wanted just to show him reacting to the force of this massive explosion. There's these scenes of mayhem on board one of the ships after the wildfire explodes and you see a burned man running by and screaming and you see this turnbuckle kind of come and, and clock a guy in the face and that's all timed and we don't have that many takes so it just had to work right. I think it's to the stunt team's credit and to Neil Marshall's credit that that turnbuckle hit the guy right in the face right when it was supposed to. Ah! Neil wanted a lot of fire, sort of big fireball effect on the ship and to create this so it's very safe, so it's very controlled with the stuntmen in front of it. We put three propane gas outlets stuck up through the deck so when we fired the electric valves, you've got a big fireball very quickly. On the ship, when you've got the chaos of all the explosions and everyone running around the ship, we designed these catapults which fire a ball of a special gel. And when it hits the ship, it bursts and you get fire spreading out all over the deck. The guys have got Nomex suits on underneath. We use a gel, which is a silicon-based gel, that goes on the skin. But it was great seeing people running around a light on a boat. It really adds to the panic of it. For our explosions on Davos' the ship, we rehearsed two elements. There's Davos, who is played by Liam Cunningham. He did that himself. The stunt people just popped into my trailer the other day and, uh, and just said, uh, by the way, Liam, you're going to be worried on this. And I'm, uh, I'm a bit old to be doing this sort of stuff. We put him on a jerk rig, just lightly pulled him out. Well, I've got a very tight corset on at the minute to make sure none of my organs get burst. We've done a few pulls to get the timing right. And these, these guys that we've got are the best in the business. So it's, it's all done um, incredibly safely. And it's, it's wonderful to be an old man doing stunts. I love it. Three, two, one, action! He did really well. We had a double just in case, but uh, the acts did superb. And then on the ship aft, we had a large explosion with half a dozen guys. Some of the guys are pulled on wires. For that, we had 12 air mortars so we had a hell of a lot of debris coming out and also there's a lot of water vapour in with it as well so you get a really good effect. Maffles did the first reaction and we put our double in and we pulled him about 15 feet through the air landed onto a box rig nice and safe. We managed to do that in one take that was very good. As this massive explosion spreads through the fleet, we then have to incorporate men on fire and the explosions. We do this in conjunction with the special effects and visual effects. In the battle, there will be a sequence of shots where there are men in the water on fire, and we're going to be shooting actual stunt people in a water tank on fire. We've had people on trampettes firing themselves over the side. So once they exit the ship into the water, we can then carry on the action within there of men drowning, men trying to swim to safety, arrows flying into them on fire. We need to create quite big waves, so we used a big 45-gallon drum 
on levers and then we push that down into the water repeatedly and gradually you start to build up quite quite a big chop quite big waves we fired arrows into stun guys what we actually have is a steel plate underneath their costume which then has a wooden board and then this is fired by a special effects guy on a high pressured gun and they dial in the pressure depending on how far away we are from our subject and that will just be fired straight into him and then we give him a cue for a reaction to timing because sometimes with all the action going you don't actually feel the arrow hit around the ship set we have smoke tubes that's run all the way around the set because it's mixed with air it comes out as a soft smoke they put a bit of a spray you know a bit of wet down really looks good as the guys come over the edge of Snaz's ship we'll see how much we're going to get in camera we're going to have some drowning soldiers soldiers on fire uh, wreckage on fire these things still look very good when they are done for real and we like to have the real water interaction in the foreground and then extend that with digital water and digital fire they're coming, they're coming ashore they're too many well obviously episode 9 is, is our is one of our biggest battle scenes between Stannis Baratheon and the Lannister Empire so in this we've I think approximately about 250 extras it's probably one of our biggest days not including cast 265 may not necessarily sound like a lot but once we have them all piling into boats and jumping off and running up the beach and some of them being shot and falling down and that will look like a lot of people uh, and I'll make it look like a lot of people <laughs> having loads of extras around creates a nice atmosphere bustling around there are disadvantages with, with, with large amount of extras just logistically putting you know costumes on them and feeding them but I think for my job anyway it, it looks great and it really helps get you into the scene in that battle scene, there's going to be about 200 extras. That's going to be fierce. That's 200 extras fighting away. That's going to be pretty intense. The extras need to be trained in fighting. So you can imagine teaching archery, teaching sword play, fencing also. We're very, very lucky that we've been given the full control over making and designing all the weaponry for the show. There's nothing that's been taken off a shelf somewhere. Everything is handmade, designed. We're not trying to copy something. We're not trying to replicate something. We're trying to make our own unique type of weaponry for this. Choreographing a large group of people in an action sequence, quite a lot of work goes into that and a lot of concentration. If it's a fight where one person is killing three people, you've got like three or four beats that you need to hit. The stunt team came up with hundreds of specific little pieces that were a part of this puzzle because in any battle of thousands against thousands, you need the variety to make it feel real. We break this, each scene and each section down into small parts. This way we get the best out of everybody and also the safety element comes into it then. You don't have to worry about too far ahead. What you need to do is look deep and make sure every piece works, not just your lead actor. You need all the pieces around him to supplement him. We've had our special extras in for two days. They've been rowing, they've been fighting, shouting, having a lot of fun. And we've whittled them down to a core of extras that get extra training with us to supplement the stunt department. So we'll spend a number of hours training the guys, get them used to the routines with the stunt guys that are actually gonna fight on the day, and making sure that their hits are accurate and they know where they're going and make sure they look like they're a professional killing machine. Come with me and take this city! So for the beach landing, we had 10 skiffs but uh, 10 skiffs were still not enough for us, so we did some on-set uh, crowd replication. We had some shots where we just see skiffs on the water, and in those shots we're gonna add additional skiffs. And then we shot the 10 skiffs approaching in the foreground, and then we shot them again approaching in the background, and later we put these two together. So we have a, a nice foreground with at least 20 skiffs, and then we retime it so we have a bit more in the distance, and we add some CG skiffs, so they even more skiffs. That's how some of the wider shots came together for the, the landing. This week we have done the, the actual landings. We had two days of training with the, the skiff teams, getting them up to speed. As they're coming in to land, the skiffs are coming in, all the guys are jumping out, there'll be flames all around them burning. And we also have flames underwater, so we'll have gas bars underwater, so you can't see the source, so that, that works really well. Once the guys have disembarked, they're broken up into archers and troops. 
the archers generally fall behind the troops and a number of the guys we choreograph that they make it to the walls and cover the whole area. There's going to be a lot of close combat fighting, especially outside the castle, so that'll involve a lot of arrows flying around. We have a lot of flaming arrows in this episode on the Lannister side. I think I'm up to about 5,000 arrows at the moment. Uh, we're still fletching. I have poor old Fergus sitting behind me at the moment, labouring away, sticking feathers onto the shafts. And if you think that if you have 5,000 arrows, that's 15,000 feathers that have to be stuck onto those wooden shafts. Once the troops arrive on the shoreline, they jump off the skiffs, they run towards the walls and they're being shot at with flaming arrows. So we had some extras and some stuntmen miming hits. So they would run and they, they would then turn and, and fall down. And then we are tracking their body motion and then putting the arrows just in the right place. So it looks like they were shot at and, and hit by an arrow. In some scenes that are full CG where you just see arrows flying, there were definitely hundreds of arrows that, that were added. We were asked by Neil uh, Marshall to recreate various scenes as we hit the beach, various dummies they want burning. In the battle, we have a lot of fire, a lot of fire in the water and bodies on fire just on the ground. And they're silicon bodies which are made by our prosthetics department and we put flame onto them. Sometimes we use petrol gel, which is a thick gel. That burns nicely, gives off black smoke. Once they reached the castle, Neil wanted to see various action shots, like a rock crushing a man's head, or a kind of samurai cut from shoulder to waist, various effects like that. Some of these were totally done in camera, and some of them will be augmented by CG visual effects, and some of them we've worked closely with special effects. So it's, Neil's asked for a lot. For the initial fight scene, the hound runs out the gate, meets the attackers. He slices a number of the Stannis' men in half. This is uh, done together with prosthetics. So we replace the, the actual men he's fighting with a prosthetic dummy. Basically, he cuts the body in half. It's hinged and the whole body falls backwards and the guts all spill out. The guts are uh, basically sausages. They can be quite realistic. They were really realistic, they were really right in my face and they were trying to tell me that it wasn't the real deal but <laughs> I think they were real to be honest. One of the, the scenes we have in the battle is where one of the guys gets crushed by a rock. The way we did this is prosthetics are made of a prosthetic head which has been made out of silicon filled with blood. We've got air tubes going up inside it. We had to work out a rig where the head could collapse and then the actual body of the dummy to fall out of frame. We got a real rock and put a ring into the top of it, fixed up an electric release overhead, and then drop it from that on cue, and that lands on the head, and you just get a big burst of blood. It's a very quick shot, but it's very effective. I think probably the greatest challenge on episode nine is Tyrion's wound. I think that's probably the biggest issue that I have. He gets seriously wounded, permanently wounded, in a way. Tyrion is going to get a sword blow across the face. Neil Marshall wanted to see the, the action and Tyrion standing there and the, and the blood appear in camera. It'll go diagonally across his forehead, right down across the bridge of his nose and down his cheek. And they might just expose his face and then just have the blood just coursing down his face. So we make a false cheek and a false forehead to apply to Tyrion. It has to fit perfectly, otherwise you're going to see it. Behind that is a bladder and the blood will be delivered to the bladder just as the cut happens and the blood will colour the cut and the cut will appear to open. It happens at the end of episode 9 and we establish it in episode 10 and then for season 3 it'll carry on as being a lasting scar so that's going to have to be something I'm going to have to sort of work out. He's definitely not good at battle but he gives a brave effort and he is still alive. That says a lot in this show. At the end of episode 9, we have this big charge and Renly's ghost appears with Tywin Lannister's army behind him. We're using 13 horses for this part of the battle and then visual effects will take it on then and make you know, multiples, you know, 100 horses and make it all work. 
With a horse charge, we break down the moves very slowly and we start working the horses through, gradually hitting sticks, banging shields, getting used to the noise. There I'm using half local horses and half stunt horses. So the stunt horses take the lead and so local horses follow the stunt horses. So we're kind of teaching them today and getting them used to it and making sure everyone knows their roots and kind of just planning all the action out. This way we're getting the horses used to being around people and in confined spaces. At the same time, we're getting the extras used to being around the horses. Everyone's got their lines, everyone knows the action, everyone knows where to go, there's escape points, and the stunt guys have to know which are the other stunt guys in the crowd to hit and which are the extras, obviously, because they're fighting the other stunt guys. We make channels to go through. I'll have a certain area with stumping around me. They know where I'm going, know where I'm hitting. Obviously, when you're working with animals, things can change, so people need to be on their toes. And we build this up by putting more and more men in, and gradually the speed of the horses build up and build up. So it's kind of keeping on top of them and training them constantly. For a very short time, we've got a lot to do. So much of the second season was about protecting that time and that money for the battle. At a certain point, we didn't know if we'd be able to do it, period, because it was going to cost so much. HBO gave us the opportunity to do something that we are very proud of. Episode 9 was like the favorite child, and it was a different color in the calendar from all the other episodes. The story really wouldn't feel right without it and there was just we couldn't imagine the season without it we're really happy with the results and i think we put together a pretty nasty bit of business the battle is over we have won